What is the best Florida retirement system pension option to pick? We're going to get into that in this video. Okay, so we're actually going to do a series of videos talking about the different pension options and when you would want to choose them. For those of you who uh, know, there's four different pension options. Uh, pensions options one and two are your life or for for single people, um, and then pensions options one, two, three, and four are only for married people. Okay, so we're going to go into the four different pension options over the next four videos. This video specifically is about pension option number one and why you would want to pick it. Okay, pension option number one. This is what I like to call your true pension amount, okay? If you are in the pension program, your pension option number one is actually how much your pension is. Pensions options two through four are life insurance that you have purchased through the FRS. I know that sounds confusing, but options two, three, and four are going to be lower than pension option number one because you're essentially buying life insurance through the state. They're reducing your value to be able to leave something to someone. Now, for those of you who are single and you're looking for the highest benefit, uh, or let's say you're married and you're looking for the highest benefit, if you just want the highest possible benefit, pick pension option number one. That's going to give you the most amount that you can possibly get. Now, you might say, okay, well, why wouldn't everyone want the highest benefit? Well, if you pick pension option one and you die the day after you receive your first paycheck, then you've worked however long, 30, 35 years, and that money stays with the FRS. For a lot of people, that rubs them the wrong way and they don't want to do it. So uh, pension option number one, I mean, you are kind of taking a risk there if you want to leave money to beneficiaries. If you say, you know what, not that big of a deal, I don't really care, you know, I don't have anyone to leave the money to, I just want to make sure I get paid out the most amount for the rest of my life, then you would want to go that route. Now, why would somebody who does want to leave money to beneficiaries pick pension option one? Well, there's a few reasons why you might want to do that. The biggest one is if you want to leave money to children or grandchildren, uh, or churches or whoever else, if you want to leave money to someone besides a spouse, pension options three and four, which in my opinion are really the only good uh, insurance options that you would that you would get from the state, they can't be left to them. So if you want to leave money to somebody besides them, uh, then you would want to go with pension option number one, and then you would want to pick, you'd want to buy life insurance, okay? We call this not just we, everyone, financial advisors in the financial industry, they call this pension maximization. Pension maximization is where you take the highest pension option for your life only, and you take the difference. So let's say the difference between option number one to option number three, let's say it's $500, just for round number's sake. Well, what you would do is you would take that $500, you would buy a guaranteed life insurance policy for $500 a month, pay into it, and then you're self-insured instead of going through the state. Uh, and then you can leave that insurance to anyone else that you want. The other benefit is if you wanna do this for a spouse, maybe your spouse would be better off getting however much that buys, half a million dollars, $600,000, whatever it is, in life insurance instead of a monthly check. Because statistically what happens is yes, women live longer than men, but typically, if you look at the statistics, spouses will typically pass away within two or three, two or three years of their, of their spouse passing away. Not always, we all know the exceptions. Uh, my grandmother's going on 40 years after her husband passed away, so that's not always the case. But statistically, it's there, so what can happen is instead of you're, you're paying this $500 decrease, your spouse gets the pension for two or three years and then your kids get nothing, or your spouse can get 500,000, they can use that to recreate income and then whatever's left can go to the kids or grandkids. So that's another reason they might wanna do it. Also, life insurance is one of the few things that are tax-free in the United States. So if you're worried about taxes going up in the future, life insurance is a better way to leave money than the pension as well 
but it all depends, okay? So we're going to get into the benefits of pensions options two, three, and four in the other videos. Okay, so let's say that you've already picked pension option one and you wanna get life insurance coverage, or let's say that you're considering it and you wanna shop it and you wanna do pension maximization. Well, you really need to make sure that you get it right away for a few reasons. Number one, the older you get, the more expensive life insurance gets, right? So it's better to lock in at a younger age. Also, you have to make sure that you are insurable. So I met with a guy who he wanted to drop, he picked pension option one, was planning on buying life insurance policy, but, but he wasn't receiving his pension yet while he was in drop, right? While you're in drop, technically you retire, you go, your, your pension's paid into a trust fund, and then at the end, it's paid out and you start getting your pension check. So his whole thing was, okay, well, right before I exit drop, I'm going to go ahead and shop life insurance, and then there you go. And then at that point, I'll, I'll uh, pick it up because then I'll get the pension check and that's it. The issue then was he became uninsurable. He ended up getting uh, sick, he got cancer, and he couldn't get insurance. So if you're thinking about doing pension maximization, you really need to have whatever life insurance policy you're going to get set into place before you separate from service. That's pretty important uh, because you don't want that situation to happen where all of a sudden you've already locked in pension option one when you either retire or go into drop, same thing. Um, but then you also, you also, you know, and then you can't buy life insurance. So make sure you have it set up before. Also be very, very careful which types of life insurance you buy, okay? So don't listen to this video and just go out and just call a random company and buy life insurance. There's good life insurance and there's very bad life insurance, okay? So my recommendation is you wanna go with something that is guaranteed and is not tied to a market index. So there are these things called Guarantee Universal Life uh, that you can go with, or you could just get like a really long term policy. So you could go with a 30 year term where it lasts until you're 90 or 95 years old and that's how old your spouse will be. There's still a risk of that lapsing, but that's better than buying a 10 year term. Um, but what I really like is what's called GUL, Guarantee Universal Life. And what that does is there's no cash value. There's nothing like that. It's true death benefit, it's true life insurance. But what I like about it is it's guaranteed. So you can get it guaranteed to age, we like to go up to 110 uh, to 120, just in case we don't know what life expectancies are gonna do in the future. And as long as you pay on it, it's good. You have to be careful about some of these universal lives, variable universal lives, index universal lives, even some whole life policies, because they're contingent on what the account value does. So you're, you're over contributing at first, and there's a cost of insurance, you're over contributing, and then that extra contribution goes into a cash value, which sounds nice, right? Oh, well, I have cash value, I can get access to it, everything else. The issue is if that cash value underperforms and doesn't do well, well, all of a sudden now, the cost of insurance is continuing to rise. So if you don't have, if it's not set up correctly or underperforms or whatever else, those policies can actually lapse and they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, well now you have to contribute instead of $500 a month, we need you to contribute six. And the next year we need to contribute 650 and then seven and then eight and then so on and so on. By the time you're 90, it's gonna be impossible to pay for. So just be very careful with those because a lot of times what I've seen is that illustrations are run showing you a best case scenario, right? So illustrations are run and saying, hey look, you'll have insurance coverage, you'll have uh, so much cash value, you're gonna be able to take so much cash value, you're gonna be able to take it out and have guaranteed income forever. Maybe, possibly, but if we're talking about a benefit that is guaranteed to be there for your family, I say, you know, going with best case scenarios is not the way to cover your family. I'm a husband, I'm a father, uh, I would not want to go with something that may or may not be there for them in the future. That's why I like the GUL because it doesn't play those games. You pay $500 a month for the rest of your life, whether you die tomorrow or whether you die at age 120, it's going to pay somebody out and it's going to take care of your family. Those are the ones that I like 
Um, so my recommendation is sit down and talk with somebody. A lot of you know that we do investments, uh, we do uh, fixed accounts, we do Medicare, but we also do life insurance. So this isn't necessarily a life insurance pitch. <laughs> if, you, if you're thinking about it, then, then you might wanna look into it. It's not for everyone. I would recommend watching our other videos on the different pension options as well. But if this is one of the ways that you think you wanna go, contact our office. We can run it, we can get you quotes, we can see, uh, you know, we're, we're independent, so we work with a bunch of different companies. And the nice thing about life insurance is the quotes and illustrations and all that are free. So you run it, you put, you, you, you put the application in, uh, they'll come out, they're gonna usually take blood and do those types of things. Which by the way, another kind of side note, there are some simple issue life insurance policies, but if you're in good health, those simple issue policies are almost always going to be more expensive than if they actually come out and do a health check on you, which makes sense, right? If they don't know for 100% sure that you're healthy, they're gonna charge you more. So if you are healthy, it might make sense. It might sound nice to have the simple issue, but it may cost a lot more in the long run or your, your family might get a lot less benefit than if they come out and do the health check and do everything else. So. Uh, if you're thinking about pension maximization, option number one, and buying life insurance, let us know. We'll link a, put a link in our calendar below that. If you want to book an appointment, we're here. Uh, we, can, we can definitely run those for you, or if you have someone else that you trust, you can go through them. That's where you have to be careful. You also have to make sure that you know what you're getting into, right? So a lot of times, what we've seen, unfortunately, is the person's employer didn't give them very good options. They just said, what do you want to do? And they said, well, I want the most amount of pension money. I want the most amount of drop money. So I'm going to pick pension option one. Makes sense, right? The issue is we've seen people do that and then all of a sudden they get sick. They pass away. That's not left the beneficiary. So uh, pension maximization, if you want to do that. And then we're going to get into the other three pension options in future videos. Uh, pension option number two, as soon as it's out, we're gonna link right up here and we will go from there. All right, thank you so much, have a good day. Thank you so much for watching our, our videos. If you need more information about the FRS, uh, if you need more information about just retirement in general, that's what we do every day. Uh, please subscribe if you can. The link to subscribe is right here. And then also if you wanna, if you're more on Facebook or Instagram, we're on all those platforms as well and we put these videos on there. The links to those are down below, or you can just search Andrew's Retirement. We update those pretty often. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Have a good day.